All right, what's up there, guys? Today we're going to be covering how to use a SEO audit report template for your business so that you can easily show clients progress after auditing their websites. So if you're confused about the process of reporting, you don't know what to use, you want to come up with reports, uh, you're probably looking at certain sites like this that are supposed to help you with checking on-page or off-page SEO. Today, I'm going to clear all of that up for you. So uh, this is gonna be a pretty easy tutorial. You're not gonna need a lot of experience doing reporting in order to do this. You're also not gonna need um, any real resources to spend, like you don't need to spend money on this. Uh, I have a free template that I will include a link in the description that you can use. And you can just go ahead and grab that um, also, you can just find it on my website just by going to chaseware.com and clicking on the resources SEO audit template. Uh, go ahead and grab that and uh, that's all you're going to have to do. So the template that we're going to be talking about today is the four phase audit template, which many of you are probably familiar with. Um, this template I've been spending the last few years working on um, so that I can provide it to you for free. Uh, it might not be free in the future, but at the moment it is 100% free, so I would grab that um, while you can. So we're going to be specifically looking at the reporting phase, which is going to be um, phase one mainly, because this is where most of your most general things are going to be um, looked at. And what I mean by general is uh, these are all things that... Um, really don't require a lot of knowledge about. Uh, most on-page checkers already check all this stuff. So um, let me give you an example. So let's talk about, first of all, the things that you don't want to use. So if you look at some of these on-page graders, you'll see online uh, by Googling, you know, um, check my on-page SEO or, um, you know, audit my website, that kind of thing. Uh, the biggest goal of these checkers is really just to check one page and give you the most general feedback possible. So a lot of the times they'll tell you, you know, your title tag, your meta description, uh, your, you know, most common keywords, uh, related keywords, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but if you keep scrolling down, a lot of it's like pretty easy to find out. You don't need, um, you don't really need this checker to tell you all this stuff because a lot of it you're going to be able to find out um, by just doing a simple screaming frog crawl. So whenever you're going to be doing reporting, um, obviously you're going to want to try to get all of the different URLs off the website and you're also going to want to um, uh, connect analytics to your screaming frog if you can so that you can get as much data as possible. And if you have no idea um, what I'm talking about, basically you can use screaming frog to uh, sync up with analytics and search console so that you can get um, data for your website um, and actually see how many clicks these pages are getting, how many impressions, what's the average position, position, that sort of stuff. Um, and this is actually really helpful for when you're doing uh, SEO because uh, you want to be able to um, optimize things based off data. If there's no data, it's kind of hard to optimize. <clears throat> So that's why these checkers are kind of dumb because none of it's really database. It's just generalized templates that um, you know might not really have anything to do with where you're at at the current moment. So when you are doing reporting, you really want to think about how can I uh, help this business based off data for their business, not based off like you know, let's say ten H ones are missing or. 301 redirects like that's important to look at but the really important thing to look at is prioritization and that's why we have the four phase audit system because generally if you can lay it out like this where you have your first phase being the one where you're addressing site-wide issues meaning anything that's going to be affecting the whole SEO on the website as a whole um, for instance you know uh, whether or not you have your pages indirect indexed correctly, whether you're, um, you know, having a messed up site architecture, 
if your robots.txt is on the website or not. Those are all things that you need to check. And, and all of this stuff takes very little time to check. You can do, I usually do these audits in about 30 minutes. That's why I give them away for free. After that, you're gonna go into phase two. And this is where you do something called benchmarking. So if you're gonna be just doing a regular SEO report for a website, like just giving away audits, audit reports, then you would go ahead and use this, the first step, because this is something you can give to them as a report saying, hey, here's all the things that are messed up and here's all the things you need to fix. And that's gonna be a good way to get people into your funnel. Now, if you're wanting to get uh, monthly reporting going, then you're gonna use phase two, which is called um, SEO benchmarking. And what you do with SEO benchmarking is you go and you figure out, okay, first of all, what are the top pages on my website? So let's say you have a page about SEO audits, let's say you have a page about um, SEO services, so on and so on. You're gonna map all of these keywords to those pages. Then you're gonna figure out how many keyword, how many clicks those keywords are getting, how many impressions, how many click-through rate, what's the click-through rate, what's the average position. And then you're gonna pull all the screaming frog metrics that we uh, were talking about over here. So I'll just show you a quick example of what this looks like on a client's website. This is somebody that I've been working with and they're actually um, doing really well right now. They just got a 20% uh, boost, I think. In no, it's actually higher. Let's see, it was, uh, let's check it out right here. We got a 22% increase in users. And this is, in, this is only in um, two weeks. So this isn't a lot of data, but this is pretty quickly. You can see the site is responding well to the changes we made. So 22% increase in users, this is all organic traffic, 20% uh, increase in sessions, 29% reduced bounce rate, that's pretty good. A 16% um, increase in pages per session, average session duration went up by 1%, and then look at the conversion rates going up by 441%, uh, which is pretty insane. And then the uh, lead submissions just to the contact form went up by 550%. And this is just in two weeks, so pretty cool. Now, again, the way that works is what we're, what we're looking at is we're, we're implementing phase one first. Um, we're reporting that to the client, uh, phase one. Then after that, we try to upsell them on a full audit. So what I'll do is for phase one, again, I'll, I'll sort all of the things that need to be fixed. I'll just go from Z to A, and then I will tell them, hey, look, this is your phase one report. Now all you have to do is go ahead and get this fixed by somebody. And obviously, who are they gonna choose to fix it? They're gonna choose me. After that, I'm gonna list out the top things they need to fix first for phase one. And I will then say, look, you need to get these other th two, to, uh, two, three, and four phases um, done. We need to do the um, rest of the report for you. So then what we're gonna do is we're going to um, start benchmarking their URLs. So we'll just take all the Screaming Frog data and the way you do this, again, is you, um, you hook up your analytics, you hook up your search console, and you hook up your hrefs. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna let you pull all this data in here. Then we're gonna map all the keywords. So you can see I have the benchmark date at 11.3, um, which is exactly 16 days ago. And then I have the um, all the metrics. So this is the pages with the keywords that the pages are ranking for. I'm mapping the pages so I know exactly um, what keywords need to rank for which page. Then I am looking at the uh, metrics that we pulled from Screaming Frog, like the page you are rating, the keyword difficulty of the keyword we're targeting, the search rate of the keyword, the URL difference from the um, hrefs page UR rating versus the keyword difficulty, uh, whether or not the um, website has duplicate content internally or externally. Uh, we use internal, uh, sorry, SiteLiner to check internal content. We check Copyscape to see the uh, external duplicate content. And they actually had a high amount of duplicate content internally and externally. So we would actually identify that content submit it to a writer, have the writer rewrite it, and then we put it back on the website. Uh, so we have all unique content. We have the bounce rate at 59%, the conversion rate at 4.46, um, the average session duration, the word count. And the cool thing is you can actually look at your competitors and see what they're doing for all their word counts too, just by exporting their stuff through Screaming From. Uh, you got the in-link count, the crawl depth, and then you got the titles, title tags, indexation, that kind of thing. 
So ideally, when we're doing changes, we're doing it based off these different metrics. And so when we report to them, hey, look, you know, these are their top issues, we can see that none of the pages are internally linking. The, way we, the reason why we know that is because uh, there's only 46 internal links per page, meaning that those are all from the menu. Um, the way you would know if this, there was more is if this was like 47 or you know 49, then you would know some of these pages are internally linking. And if you want to figure out which pages are internally linking on your website, you can actually um, use Screaming Frog to check out the internal links, or you can use uh, Ahrefs. Ahrefs will tell you as well um, if you don't want to buy both Screaming Frog and Ahrefs. So here's all the internal links on um, Screaming Frog. Pretty cool. Um, so yeah, ideally what we want to do is we want to see when we re-benchmark this next month that a lot of these changes, uh, things have been improving. For instance, I already checked Search Console and the click-through rate for this keyword now is up at 7%. And that's simply just by changing the title tag and the meta description. Uh, if we keep scrolling over, we know the bounce rates went down and that's probably because we saw that the page speed was really slow because they had a, a, a live chat that was slowing down the website. Um, the average session duration went up and it's probably because the usability and the direction of the website is a little bit better now. We have call to actions where they need to be. The in-link count's going up as we add internal links to the pages. So a lot of this stuff that was red before is going to end up being green, which is a good sign because it's just going within the metrics we're looking for. Even the UR ratings can go up just by taking the most valuable pages on the website and internally linking them back to whatever page we're trying to raise the UR rating. And that's how you can use this um, template to really report big issues to your client. Um, let me talk about some of the other things. So some of the most common things that people are looking for when it comes to SEO reports is uh, white label, on page, um, the monthly report. And we already kind of covered this. So again, for the uh, first report, just a one-time report, you would do phase one. For a monthly report, you would do phase two. Um, for a keyword report, you would use phase three. And um, phase three really kind of goes with our recent video, which has to do with auditing your content. And what I mean by auditing your content is when you find keywords on here, you want to figure out the related things ranking, just kind of like how I showed you this list right here. So the way you do that, it's kind of cool, is you just go to something like Ahrefs. You go to your keyword explorer and you start typing in keywords that you want to rank for. So let's say we want to rank for, uh, you know, attic breeze. We would put that in here, press search. And then what we can do is we can start looking at the people who are ranking. So we can go grab this website and see all of the organic keywords that this is ranking for. Now, all you have to really do is just categorize these as keywords that you want to put into your uh, pages. So this will actually give you a lot of ideas because say for instance, um, you don't know what else to write about. Maybe you're only getting tips around, you know, attic breeze for, you know, something long tail, attic breeze for yada, you know, whatever. You're not going to get these semantic keywords, like these um, things that don't have attic breeze, right? So this says solar paddock powered attic fan and solar roof fence. So these are hyper relevant to this thing that people are, that you should probably add to your page, but you would never find that out by just doing regular keyword research. So that's why it's so important to look at what the competitors are ranking for and using that as a way to um, add that into your copy. Uh, looks like somebody just said analytics SEO audit. Oh, analytics. Yeah, I've seen some of her stuff. She's pretty nuts uh, in a good way, but um, once you start diving too far into analytics, it starts to get a little weird. Um, definitely in terms of doing analytics reporting, uh, I think the best way to do it is just to report on the pages you actually really work on, um, which is why the benchmarking template for phase two is really the best monthly report in my opinion. Uh, unable to download audit template from MessengerBot, please provide direct link. Um, is anybody else in chat not able to download the uh, template from the bot because it should work fine. And by the way, guys, if you ha if you would be so kind, um, please leave a like on this video. It helps me get to more people. Um, would appreciate that. And if you guys have any questions so far, just leave a star um, symbol next to your question and I'll be able to read it off. Uh, viral video channel says, hey, Chase, have you ever heard of the Webris Blueprint SEO templates? Yes, I have. Um, and the only thing that I have uh, a problem with Webris is that the templates are a little counterintuitive. Like you look at them and they are 
pretty set up to be like, I wouldn't say, you know, difficult, but I think they're a little bit too overdone in a sense. Um, even I was kind of confused with when I was like trying to set them up and I, per I personally bought them so I could try to check out what they were doing. And I found that a lot of it's just kind of, it's, it's a little too uh, intense. I don't think it needs to be how it is in a sense. So anyways, uh, going back to what we were talking about. So, um, Trying to think the last thing I want to say. So yeah, really what you want to do is you want to, when you're doing reporting, you want to figure out what the main clients are. You want to figure out who these people want to be like, and you want to figure out what they're doing well. So you want to be like, okay, well, you know, the top things about their competitors is, you know, they're ranking really well, uh, ranking really well for uh, organic keywords. They have presence on YouTube doing uh, marketing on Facebook, that kind of thing. And then you want to analyze what the best things are that they're doing, like figure out what their top posts are, figure out what their you know best keywords are, that kind of stuff. And you want to start figuring out, okay, how are they doing this? Are they building a ton of links? Are they you know doing really good content? Because a lot of the time, as you guys probably saw from my content um, checklist yesterday, what people will end up doing is they'll end up niching down to something first. So um, if we look and see like um, what the this person's doing for solar attic fan Generally what people will do is they'll take parent keywords and they'll start doing a bunch of stuff around them first so like if we go to attic breeze and We click on parent topic and we include anything with attic in it You're gonna see a whole ton of different parent topics around this so solar powered attic fan solar Attic fans reviews, solar attic fans with thermostat, like all of this is very, very um, relevant to their main keyword, which could be attic, you know, attic fan or something like that. Um, so ideally, what you want to do is you want to take all of your parent topics and put them into one page, and then you would take your other parent topics and put them into another page. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be internally linking all these pages together so you start creating an architecture around your main keyword. Now, people often ask me, they say, Chase, you know, how do I, how do I figure out what sort of on page I should do for each of these pages? And it's really easy. Instead of thinking about like word count or links or any of that stuff, figure out what's going, what's working for the people currently. Figure out what the layout is. Is it a product page? Is it a service page? Is it a, um, uh, blog post and what you're going to do is you're going to go just actually google it and see okay this it looks like a blog page here um, this also looks like a blog page 10 reviews okay and then what you're going to do is you're going to see what's working for these people maybe they have um, a table of contents maybe they have a video maybe they have these tables with um, all these comparisons on them you want to you want to check this stuff because Often, a lot of the pages that will be ranking will be based on layout, based on similar things going on. So if we know all these pages that are ranking our blog posts, you wouldn't want to just go and make a service page with 2,000 words on it just because you think that's going to rank. You want to figure out what's working for these people. And often, you also want to figure out the other things that are working for them. So if they're you know, doing well here, you can see they're probably uh, doing well on other pages as well. And you want to figure out what their architecture is that they're building. Um, one cool way you can actually do this with Screaming Frog is you can go and see, uh, by doing visualizations, you can actually see, let me go back to the home page here, and we're going to look at the directory tree graph. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, there we go. So we can actually see the silos on the website. Now, if you want to rank for a category, like I have um, a category called Rust on here that I'm doing really well for, which is a game, you'll see that the silos usually are pretty good. Oops, I was trying to get out of this highlight. There we go. Um, so you'll see this post links to these two posts. Um, gosh darn, I keep clicking on this. And then all of these other ones over here, like when I'm trying to rank for, uh, you know, like best gaming stuff, um, 
usually these aren't going to be doing as well because they are uh, uh, I'm not creating as much authority around those like you, you you usually want to target things that are lower difficulty in the beginning so if you don't have any links to your website you don't have any authority then you have really no business for going for keyword difficulty like 90 or something like that like you wouldn't want to just start for like trying to rank for this kind of stuff keyword difficulty 40. Um, you want to go for something that's within your range. So that's why with like this website, you'll see we're doing really well with zero domain authority um, right here. So we have zero DR, but we're ranking for like 3.6 thousand organic keywords. And that's because a lot of these keywords are siloed really well. You know, we have a page for Rust admin commands. We have a page for Rust gears, page for Rust vending machines, Rust console commands. So all of these are ranking well together. Now, when you start looking at some of our other things that we're trying to rank for, like you know, best gaming controller over for 2019 or something, that's not going to do as well because it's like we aren't one, it, we're not, we don't have enough authority for that yet, and two, most of our site isn't recognized for that. So when you're doing a template or you're doing a report for somebody, you want to figure out should these pages be on their website because some of the pages definitely shouldn't if they're not within what their main topic is. You want to choose one main topic at a time, hammer on that for a month or two, and then move to the next thing that should be somewhat similar to that. So like right now for my own website, I'm trying to do everything around SEO audits. So SEO audit reporting, SEO audit services, uh, you know, white label SEO audits, all that stuff. I'm trying to create as much content around that as possible because I want to be the guy who's who does everything around SEO audits. Now, I don't recommend this to most people if you don't have the authority yet because SEO audit, the most general keyword you'll see for that is pretty competitive. You'll see it's like up in the 60s, 64. So eventually I wanna be able to rank for that, but I don't even have the authority for that yet. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be going for the lower keywords first. Like let's say something like SEO, what we're talking about today, SEO audit report. Um, so if I type in report, we'll actually see what that keyword difficulty is. So you could see SEO audit report template sitting there at a 10, which is doable, right? Um, so I start getting these small wins around SEO audits. I start getting internal linking. I start building authority. And then eventually I start going for more competitive things. Like let's say, um, let's go over here, go to the keyword difficulty. Then we could start going for, you know, SEO audit checklist, which is at a 40. Start building a bunch of content around that. Because if we look at the parent topics, we'll see all the things around audit checklist. Let's go check it out. And here's a bunch of stuff. So we got uh, longer tail, which is 2017. What up? Oh, that looks so good. Thank you. Um, you know, uh, so yeah, you can see this is like a longer tail. I could go for SEO audit checklist 2019. Start there and start to go there. Um, one thing that Brian Dean does really well, he actually just released a new post. He, I got an email from him. I don't know if you guys got this email, but he taught he uh, he's like, here, check out my new guide for SEO 2020. And uh, this is just a relaunched guide. He's been relaunching the same guide for the last three years. So it's got a shit ton of authority. And it's just going to keep ranking for new keywords because he's relaunching the same post. And the way you can apply that to your own site is like create content that you can keep relaunching, content that you can keep resharing with new information because it's just going to keep getting more and more authority and it's going to be impossible for people to outrank you. Um, okay, so the audit template sent to Hardly Incognito works for Muhammad. Where can where to get this graph? It's on the website. Um, so it's, it's about 50-50. Some people it's not sending to you. Some people it is. It's kind of weird. Um, I'll just send you guys the link in chat. Uh, it's right here. If you guys can't get it, that's like kind of the override. But um, yeah, I'm going to be taking questions before I head out. So let me know if you guys have any. Um, if there's anything I can answer for you about the reporting process. Oh, shoot. But I mean, it should be pretty straightforward. Once you have the template, you can pretty much learn how to do this. One thing that I am adding to my certification, if you guys don't know about it, is 
Um, I'm actually going to be taking all these different sections and doing videos with explainers for each one, but it's going to only be for people in the program. If you guys aren't familiar with the program, I have a certification program that um, actually some of the people from the certification are in the chat. You can talk to them if you want to hear about it. But what I do is I bring people into a Discord channel. I do weekly, or not weekly, sorry, almost daily calls where I'm like sharing my screen, doing um, uh, live implementations on websites. I'm giving leads. You can actually see this is a lead that I just gave to the program. So I give a bunch of leads to people in there um, that I get because I don't, I can't work with everybody. I get a bunch of SEO audit leads. I think I actually just got one right now. Uh, looks like it's a $300 lead. So I'll probably just put that in the program as well. So I try to feed the people in the program as much as possible um, so they can make back the money they invested. And the uh, program is a little bit of an investment. It's definitely uh, pricey for a lot of people, but the idea is you come in, you learn how to audit, you learn all this stuff, you get to get on calls with me every day, you get my phone number, I'm helping you out one-on-one, -on -one. I'm trying to help you build authority, help build your business, get you leads, funnel leads to you. I mean, it's a really, really good deal if you're looking to make um, make a business doing SEO and you're, and you're not really sure. It looks like Augie's actually typing in here right now because I think he's in chat. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's super, uh, super valuable for anybody who's trying to take their game to the next level. Um, I would definitely, if, if I were you, if you were interested in this program, um, go to my website. You can see more details about it. I actually need to update the page a little bit, but um, you can apply for it. I only take about one to two people in it per month. Um, so if you're, you know, uh, looking to take your game to the next level, I would definitely apply for this. Um, and uh, I'll leave the link in chat. All right, any questions? Uh, Sam says, you never talk about backlink strategies. That's because I don't do link building. Shivam says, thank you so much. The download worked for the link. Sweet. Uh, could you please tell us about how to find high DA social bookmarking websites? I couldn't because I don't think that's um, worth your time. I think you should be focusing on content. Focus on building out an architecture I was talking, like I was talking about. Focus on building... Uh, video base uh, with like media so that you can integrate it within your posts. Um, try to become known as the person who does one thing really well. Don't be like the guy who's like, oh, I'm really good at doing local SEO. Um, that's just so general. Be like good as the guy who does like local SEO for dentists and you're ranking for everything around dental SEO. So if I go and look up like dental SEO, there's going to be so many things that you can go for around this. Um, Look at all keyword ideas around this. Uh, you know, dental marketing, best best dental marketing companies, uh, uh, dentist marketing, dental expert. Actually, that's a little bit different. Um, SEO for dentists. Like you want to go for all of these things first. You want to niche down to something that has a low keyword difficulty at the most general level. So like your main keyword, if it's trying to rank for dental SEO, then you should be going for all the lower keywords below that because then eventually you're gonna build up to having enough authority to rank for that big keyword. And that doesn't require link building. I am planning to go for rank and rent. Um, well, disclaimer, I am ranking number one for that. So you're gonna have to beat me. But uh, yeah, I mean, you could do that unless you're just saying you wanna rank for rank and rent, like you wanna rank a rank and rent site. Um, there's only so much you can do around rank and rent though. Like, uh, I, I wouldn't recommend it. It's not, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but it's just, uh, it's like a dying art right now. In my opinion, I think it used to be a way better idea back in the day. What's up, Will William? All right. Any questions guys? I've been building content for a whole year, 120 posts. My website never took off. I got about 180 organic visitors in an entire year. Obviously, content by itself is not enough. Let me see the website. I'll actually show you a website that we didn't do any link building to. They got links naturally, of course, but our sleep guide, um, actually in the program, in the certification program, there's 17 videos of me doing over like long streams of me just clicking on a bunch of stuff changing stuff and it went from six visits a day to like three, two or 3,000 visits a day. 
Um, this is actually after I left, after I quit my agency, but it was up here when I was here. So I would definitely say that, you know, I mean, in the last two or three years, all I've done is SEO without link building. People don't believe me, but it's 100% true. I have a thousand videos on YouTube and most of them are actually me doing SEO on websites and it's not a single link has been built. You can actually go look. I know it has 4.9 thousand backlinks, which is why I said it acquires backlinks naturally. I don't do link building though. Siphon King, you'll see same thing. iPhone repair, all my local sites. Like, look at this, zero DR. Look what happened to the website. How many, how many times have you seen that with a zero DR website? It's weird, right? It's because it's not necessary. You don't have to build links. Sam says, I've been building con, oh, she, they already said that. And like I said, go ahead and enter your website if you want me to check it out. A lot of the times why I see people not ranking is because they're not following this four phase system. They're not, you know, uh, making sure everything's in place or they're not going into, you know, phase two and looking at all the data. What if you have, uh, what if you have, you know, 50 or like a 90% bounce rate on your top pages? Uh, what if you're not internally linking? What if you're um, not creating contextual silos? Kyle says, I'm just getting back into this, so all my questions would probably be dumb. I'm just gonna go watch all your videos and come back and ask some questions. I mean, go ahead and ask questions right now. There's no dumb question. However, I will ask you guys one more time if you can, leave a like on this video. It will help me out. We got 43 people watching, only 20 likes. So just go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, because it helps me get more publicity. Shivam says, I am aiming to rank for a local search for a niche in my city and sell the leads coming from there. Yeah, so we actually did that in our rank and rent course and we were able to rank for plumbing. It was plumbing Coronado. And we did this with a one page website, again, without doing link building. Um, here it is. It was number one and it was on the map until somebody reported it, which is the reason why I don't like doing rank and rent because People do this all the time with my websites, they get reported. Um, and you'll see, look, this is just a one page Google site that's not secure and it's bringing in leads every month. Uh, we're actually making money off the leads. Uh, 28 likes, thanks Mohammed. Thanks for the like, Michael. Uh, Hassan, Hassan says your SEO audit covers all analytics, SEO audit? No, it's completely different. So analytics, she has a temp, I actually just bought it recently. She has a Word doc that just goes over a bunch of different, uh, <clears throat> bunch of different like items. Like it's like 180 items, but it's not a checklist in a sense. It's not like an Excel spreadsheet, which is unfortunate. Uh, Hardly Incognito says, "Do you have any videos on how to structure SEO packages to a client?" I struggle to offer SEO without including some form of content marketing in my package. Yeah, so I mean. You can put content marketing in there, but it's, I would recommend only sticking to SEO unless you're going to be running an agency because once you start offering other services, it's just more stuff you have to manage and it's more stuff you have to be good at. So generally this is how I do it. So I'll do step one, I'll offer a free audit or I'll offer an audit. Um, it's up to you whether you want to offer it for free or not. I usually offer it for free for bigger clients. Like I just got a huge website that's getting... I think it's like $3 million, $3 million in conversions every year. So I offered them a free audit, um, but it's only for phase one because phase one only takes like 30 minutes. So you're just checking off like basic stuff. And the idea is, is like, if you can find like basic stuff in here, which you're almost always going to be able to, then you try to sell them on phase two. So you go, Hey, um, you know, we found 10 things wrong with your website on phase one. We want to dive deeper with your analytics and we want to, we want to go, uh, you know, do the rest of the audit for the website. So you offer them phase two, three, and four. And I usually offer that for about 500 bucks. Um, it really depends though, because sometimes I'll offer it for more. Sometimes I'll offer it for less. It just really depends on, um, obviously your supply and demand, how busy you are, uh, how many people are actually calling you. So, but I think $500 is about a pretty good price that people, most people are willing to pay. 
and it usually takes about two or three hours to complete it unless you're starting out it might take a little bit longer and then from there you're gonna do a uh, you're gonna upsell you know some sort of implementation package so I usually you know sell the first implementations for like 1500 bucks or 2000 um, depending on how much is there from all the four phases combined but usually 1500 to 2000 is good and I'll sell that as a one-time thing I won't lock them in at first and then after that what I'll do on um, the fourth step is then I'll try to sell them on a six month deal where it's like or three to six month deal where it's like okay we're gonna uh, do um, you know fifteen hundred dollars a month and this is all the stuff we're gonna do uh, which is like maintenance uh, you know benchmarking every month the reporting yada yada but then you lock them in you can try to get them to pay up front you know forty five hundred for all three months um, it's up to you but I usually uh, try to lock people in at a um, bigger price for a three month period because I just like to make sure that they're gonna pay that um, it's better than doing monthly where people can cancel on you and they've already committed usually about you know two thousand dollars fifteen hundred dollars um, altogether um, through both of these stages so at that point they're gonna want to keep you around if you do a good job so locking them into three months they'll usually do even though it's a higher investment um, and that way you don't have to worry about them not doing well uh, because usually you know if you have them on a monthly retainer at like 1500 uh, you know two months in they'll be like oh I want to back out so it's better to try to lock them in after you get them in as a one-time package uh, do you think it's too late to rank a site for Black Friday and holiday e-commerce on WordPress? Depends on what you're going for, bro. Could be really easy keywords, could be really difficult. Um, I don't I have no idea what you're targeting. Daredevil says, I want to rank my new website, uh, my new job website, any tip ranking in India? Yeah, I would just rewatch this whole video if I were you. Uh, Shivam says, "Will you see? We'll see you tomorrow night. Have an exam tomorrow morning. All right, see you, man. Uh, how many email emails, phones you send per day? Response rate and conversion rate. Uh, I usually just use ManyChat. I was using email, and my con my response rate's usually about sixty to seventy percent. Or yeah, my open rate. And I don't usually push my sales. Like I, I usually don't give away the free audits unless I have to, um, because a lot of the times I'll get." people co contacting me organically, but if I have to, then I'll put out like a blast on many chat or something saying, you know, I'm offering a free audit and then I'll get usually like 40 or 50 people uh, asking for audits in the first like couple hours. Hardly incognito says, thank you so much for that. Wrote it uh, all day. Cheers. Wrote it all, wrote it all down. Nice. MD says, uh, why do people find difficult, especially me to rank a Shopify on e-commerce stores? What's your take on that? What are things, what are things that need to be kept in mind if one is looking to rank stores? Uh, I, like I said, niching down, figuring out a uh, topic that you want to be really targeted in that's within your sort of authority range. Obviously, if you have zero authority, then you're going to be going for zero authority keywords like these. You know, zero, three, four. If you have more authority, um, like this site, like my my Chase Reiner site then you have a little bit more flexibility to go for more general keywords. Um, and you just work your way up, like focus on building the uh, brand that has the best stuff for what you're going for. And the links will come, the authority will come. But if you're only focusing on building like arbitrary metrics, like you know how many links are going to your website, nobody looks at that. Nobody interprets your company based off your links. Everybody interprets your company based on what you do and who you are. And what you'll see with a lot of people, a problem with a lot of people, even just like SEO people is, uh, you know, the people that do it well, they specialize in one thing very well. The people who don't do it well, they'll uh, try to rank for a bunch of different stuff. So they'll like have, you know, how to make a hundred dollars a day, how to do SEO, uh, how to do analytics, how to do Shopify, how to do drop shipping. And they're just, they're not, um, they're not niching down. Now, obviously, you can do all this stuff if you have a shit ton of authority. Like Neil Patel could talk about S uh, SEO and then social media and then Snapchat and all this stuff because he's built his brand around being able to, uh, you know, target pretty much everything and, and still have a ton of engagement authority around it. But that takes a lot more effort. It also takes a lot more money. You have to be constantly putting out content around everything. Um, in order to do that, you 
you can't do it as a one man team. Like if you did want to do it as a man, one man team, you have to do it before it, all this stuff was blowing up. Like Neil Patel got in it into all this stuff before everything was super competitive. So obviously he's at the top now and it's really easy for him. If uh, you're starting out and you have zero authority, nobody knows who you are, you don't have any leads, you don't have any money, you don't have a team, then you want to just hyper, hyper target at something, do something really, really well, and then slowly move your way up to something more general. What's a bad bounce rate? Uh, that's opinion. I would say anything above 60 to 70%. Um, but if your conversion rate's high, then it doesn't really matter. I mean, obviously it does, but you know, if your page is performing the way you need it to perform, then that's all that matters. Yo, Chase, I'm building websites. Do you think that it would be wise to follow the roadmap in advance? Obviously, I won't have any data of mine, of course. Um, yeah, so I would just skip the roadmap and I would go straight to um, the content audit, which is the thing I did yesterday. And if you guys haven't checked that video out, I would go check it out after you watch this video. Um, basically, I talk about how to use this quick template to um, start figuring out all the stuff you want to rank for. Um, with the silos I was telling you about. Uh, Will says, could you please put the roof repair website in Ahrefs to see the traffic growth? Thanks. Yes. So I just came in on November 1st and there was this huge spike here for some reason. Um, Sometimes the data when you have less is kind of bad. Um, if you look at the analytics, it gives you a little bit better of an idea. Well, actually, I think it was that other account. And again, I've only been, it's only been two weeks since we started it. So that's not really enough data for us to be like, oh, this is a huge improvement, right? Which is why I did that quick screenshot of like the you know, 14 day uh, period. But I'll just show you really quick. So we go to organic. So, I mean, analytics doesn't lie. Um, these tools, again, are kind of hard to measure like right away, especially after only a 14 day period. But you could see on analytics, I mean, this is huge. Um, and if we look at their main keyword roof repair, Houston, I believe they are now number one in the maps, which they were number three um, 14 days ago. And it looks like they're number three here now, which I think they were like number five or six before. Um, that's just their main keywords. But again, they have a lot of duplicate content. So we're still trying to get all of that situated and rewritten and everything, which is gonna help a lot as well. Nice work. Thanks, Will. Um, hi, Chase. How to set a 4 code, 410 code remove URL from SERP. So if you go into your website, you can get a plugin just called 410 for WordPress, and it'll let you do that. Uh, yeah, I would just look up 410 for WordPress plugin. Uh, if you don't have that, then you have to do it like on your server, I believe, um, if you don't have WordPress. Uh, Kyle says, so... You can have one website and then different pages on the website rank for different things on the same website. That's so weird. Yeah, you want that to happen because if you see in your report in phase two that there's a bunch of keywords that have the same um, keywords ranking, and this is actually something that what happened with that our sleep guide website that we were ranking is they had a bunch of pages that were about the same thing and, so, and one page would, let's say, be ranking for roof financing, but then another page would be as well. So... Um, that's usually because of duplicate content issues or because the targeting is targeting the same thing. So what you want to do is you want to figure out, okay, should I rewrite this content? Should I change the targeting for the other page? Should I 301 redirect that other page? Should I canonical that page? Um, should I no index it? Should I 410 it? You know, there's a bunch of different things that you have to think about when you're thinking about duplicate content. And it does get confusing, but um, as you start dealing more with duplicate content, uh, you'll start to see a theme that's pretty easy to figure out. Hassan says, what if a client say rank for affiliate marketing keyword for a brand new site? How many time and cost? What will be your strategy? Yeah, so for a brand new website, I'd start with the content report. And I'd start with phase three and extracting your competitor data. So again, I would, if I were you guys, go type in after this. 
after you leave a like on this video. Go Chase Reiner, find one of my recent videos. It's called the How to Do Content Audits. I'll actually link it for you guys. And this is explains if you're working with a brand new website, and you don't have any data, this is the first thing you need to do. This is like the layout. It's only 30 minutes and I'm telling you this will really change your strategy if you're confused about how to work with new websites. Uh, um, Jod says, Chase, can you tell us how to find high DA expired web 2.0 domains? No, don't focus on that. Nobody, again, judges your company by your expired 2.0 domains. They judge your company based on what you provide, what you specialize in, what you're niching down to, uh, most people who do link building, they'll just try to find keywords that they think they should rank for and they just try to build as much authority for them with links as possible. But at the end of the day, they could have been spending that time working on something that's actually going to be benefiting people, right? Do you see the difference? Building a link is only benefiting you. Building a brand and a company and a niche and a specialization is actually helping people. So you want to focus your effort there. Links are only like 10 to 20% of the algorithm now. And I've been saying this for years. Stop building links. They're going to be slowly devalued more and more and more, which is what they have been doing. And all of your efforts that have been going into link building are going to be worthless because you could have been building a company that actually does things to help people. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to eat this breakfast that my girlfriend made me. Um, it was good seeing you guys. And uh, we'll be seeing you all very soon. Um, again, if I were you, if you have the money, go check out the SEO certification, get in there. We have a couple spots open and uh, that's it for today. So until we see you all next time, happy SEOing and uh, talk to you later. Bye.